Thank you all for joining us today. I'm Danielle McGeary, Amy's Vice President of Healthcare Technology Management. Today, we have Herman McKenzie from the Joint Commission and Ty Greenhall from Medigate, who will be explaining the Office of the Inspector General report on the cybersecurity of connected medical devices and how it may affect healthcare compliance. So our first question is in 2021, the Office of the Inspector General or OIG released that report expressing its concerns about cybersecurity and healthcare. Ty, could you please describe the environment that led to this? Sure. Uh, and thank you very much for, for having me here, Danielle. Um, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. So I would uh, I would start uh, back in 2009. I'll make this, you know, make it run through pretty quick. But uh, 2009, the uh, American Reinvestment and Recovery Act basically created a meaningful use where we wanted to get the electronic records online. And so there were incentives for that. And uh, in, in doing that, we basically brought all the, the records electronic, and uh, that created the most valuable record uh, in the world and uh, across all industries uh, that hackers you know, started coming after. And we really didn't kind of think that through from a security standpoint. Um, and so uh, uh, in 2015, we created a, a legislation called the Cybersecurity Act. And, and in it, there was a section called 405, which called out healthcare and, and basically said, we have to go and do an assessment of healthcare. What's the, uh, what's, what are our risks from a cybersecurity perspective? And then do something about it. Um, uh, about that time, WannaCry hit and uh, you know was devastating to the UK health system. So that added even more emphasis and uh, we have to do something. So you can see that the, the level of anxiety of our, our, our critical infrastructure of healthcare you know, keeps going up. And so in 2018, the group uh, under the, uh, the, uh, the Cybersecurity Act, the Directive 405D is the group's name, created the Healthcare Industry Cybersecurity Practices which is the basically kind of the best practices for cybersecurity and healthcare uh, as a response to the uh, assessment that was done uh, under that act, and we uh, that 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 those those best practices. Uh, just to know, they're they're going to be updated. They could be updated any day now. They came out in 2018, but we've updated them. I'm on I'm on the work group, uh, but there's a section in there for medical devices, and uh, you know I think uh, that. Look for that document to be coming out. There's going to be a lot of information in there for for the uh, the listeners here. Uh, but then, and uh, to to take it up to date now, you know, we 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 wanted to address the uh, the problem of, of 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 hackers and getting the data and stealing it, and we haven't done a good job of it. And so, in 2021, if you remember the Colonial Pipeline, when that was hit, the uh, it, it it they went after the IT, but they hit the operational technology because we they needed to, to shut down the operations, which affected gas prices. And if you do that in a hospital, it affects medical devices and patient care. And, and so you you uh, we, we started realizing that IT is different than operational technology. And so with that, we started thinking about patient care in a, in a whole new way. Uh, when hackers are hacking, we don't want it to affect patient care and patient outcomes. And so that takes us right up until that, that was occurring uh, in uh, May of 21. And then the Biden came out with the uh, Improving Cybersecurity Act, uh, reinforcing all this, that we, we really need to be doing something about the operational technology, like medical devices. Great. So Herman, once the Joint Commission found out that the OIG had concerns about cybersecurity, how did the Joint Commission respond? Sure. So let me just uh, describe the relationship and why would the Joint Commission have a relationship or concern with the Office of Inspector General? So just to describe their, their task, the OIG is responsible for oversight of many uh, intergovernmental agencies, one of them being CMS. Uh, as you know, the Joint Commission is the largest accreditor of healthcare organizations, and we basically accredit on behalf of CMS. Now, we accredit uh, organizations that don't rely on CMS, but for most part, most of our customer base is based on CMS. So if the OIG is looking into processes that CMS may or may not have, uh, it stands to reason that we would be concerned. Great. So during um, the closing session of Amy um, in 2022 of the comp 
conference, you announced a new joint commission task group for creating a new survey to adjust the OIG report and eventually um, create elements of performance. Can you talk a little bit more about this, Herman? Sure. So this 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 follows along on uh, my just my previous response. Uh, knowing that the OIG was looking to CMS to come up with a focused uh, medical device cybersecurity evaluation uh, um, approach or means of compliance, we thought to get ahead of the curve. And so we convened a technical advisory panel with experts within cybersecurity, information technology within healthcare, et cetera, to look at what's out there if and when the requirement to develop medical equipment focus uh, elements of performance or standards would come, what would we need to make sure is included? And so it's a, it's a process. It's not a momentary thing. We do our research. Uh, as you can see in the graphic, we convene the technical advisory panel. And right now, we're still, we are still looking at the literature and looking at what would need to be done uh, and make, to make sure that we are not to overburden organizations but making sure that if we focused on medical equipment, cybersecurity, that we're doing it the right way. Great, so Ty, can you kind of give us an overview of what you're seeing occurring in the industry around cybersecurity right now? Sure, uh, there's, there's just a, a tremendous amount of activity going on. Uh, gosh, it seems like every week something, something new. Uh, I would say, uh, What's happened recently in December, the uh, the FDA got new powers uh, from the government under the omnibus um, appropriations consolidation in section 3305, where they, uh, when they're dealing with medical device manufacturers, they can start uh, putting a, a additional requirements on them for cybersecurity with results to you know the, the overall life cycle, uh, making that better, the patching, the updating, vulnerability disclosure, uh, and then also requiring an S bomb. So, you know that was uh, that's that that was a, a significant event. And uh, the White House came out with their national uh, strategy for cybersecurity, which is really putting more uh, responsibility on the manufacturers to deliver um, higher quality cybersecurity. You know, there are, the devices have better cybersecurity in them when the hospitals get them. Uh, Senator Warner came out with 17 policies to consider for. Uh, everything relating to okay, let's let's take a look at the HIPAA. That's that's you know back in the '90s when that was started, and uh, what what are the best practices? The best practices for cyber hygiene, and um, should there be grants, incentives, uh, cash for clunkers? There's, so there's a lot of discussion around that. Uh, most recently, the uh, the home, home, homeland security and government affairs. Uh, Senate committee had a meeting where they had testimony on what are the challenges, what are the recommendations, what are the best practices for solving this problem for small, medium, and large healthcare facilities because it's a critical infrastructure. And there seems to be bipartisan um, uh, consensus that something's got to get done. And then just last week, the White House came out and uh, I saw something in Politico saying that they're really looking for policy recommendations around medical device cybersecurity and considering grants. So, Ty, building on that question, obviously, legacy devices are always at the top of our problematic list as it relates to cybersecurity. You know, as we know, you know, the device's operating systems become outdated, they lack updates to vulnerabilities, and sometimes this happens even before they complete the FDA approval process. So what advice would you have on how legacy devices can be handled differently in healthcare settings? Well, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, it is. Uh, uh, what's what's good is that the the new FDA, the new powers will kind of. I I, I say it's stop the plug the hole in the boat, uh, and so there no more. Hopefully, reduce the amount of risk coming into a facility through the new devices, but you still have all the water in the boat. You got to get out, right? And and so with that, uh, I think that probably the the best thing I could recommend right now is a, it's a new publication that was is put out uh, called uh, Healthcare Industry Cybersecurity Managing Legacy Technology and Security or HICMALTS, H-I-C-M-A-L-T-S. If you Google that, you'll find it. Um, it was 67 experts led by uh, the likes of 
uh, Samantha Jacques from McLaren and Mike Powers from Intermountain and Jessica Wilkerson from the FDA on what organizations, both manufacturers and HDOs, they were both on the, the committee to that created a, a publication that said, here's the best way to communicate, the best way to do governance, the best way to do cybersecurity uh, risk management, talking about patching, talking about risk transfer um, between the organizations when the end of life or end of support. So that document, I think it, 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 uh, it, that's the best thing I could recommend right now uh, as far as how to go about trying to reduce the risk of the legacy technology uh, in your own environment. Well, that's great. So Herman, from the Joint Commission's perspective, what do you see as being on the horizon for healthcare cybersecurity? Well, let's talk about healthcare and cybersecurity overall. Um, the Joint Commission has been concerned and um, has, has never uh, turned away from this. In fact, we have had for several years uh, a standard and elements performance related to uh, protected health information and information. Because as you boil it down, what is cybersecurity about? Protecting information. So we have some information management standards that require organizations to have processes in place to ensure uh, that information is kept private and secure. Now, what's the next step? The next step and the focus now is on medical equipment cybersecurity, all right? Now, we can fold it on the umbrella, umbrella of the information management, but the OIG wants uh, there to be focused on medical equipment cybersecurity. So let me also offer this. The Joint Commission, while we are the largest accreditor in, the, in for healthcare, we are not cybersecurity analysts. And just as we do with our information management approach, we don't compel all organizations to have the same approach to manage uh, cybersecurity, either in general, and we probably wouldn't for medical equipment. As many organizations you have out there, there's probably as many approaches to address their cybersecurity uh, protocol. So on the horizon, I, I think we're going to study this information some more, look at the information from the technical advisory panel, and if and when or when that comes about, a change comes about, we will make sure that it's appropriate for all types of organizations, large, small, those with the most resources, and those with, uh, with even less. Great. Well, that's the end of my questions for today. I am very thankful that you both took time out of your busy schedule to come here and answer some questions and provide some clarification for the field. Um, if you want to learn more about cybersecurity, um, we are kicking off a six-part webinar series sponsored by Medigate on Tuesday, May 16th during HTM week, and it'll run um, for the following five months. So you can register for all of that on the Amy events page, and we hope to see you there. But Ty and Herman, thank you again for your time today. We are just so appreciative. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.